Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Business of Security Weekly podcast. This is podcast episode number nine. My name is Larry Snow, and this is the podcast that focuses on the business side of security. In this week's episode, I'm going to cover OSINT, or Open Open Source Intelligence, easy for me to say. I'll share with you some tools and apps you can use to scrub the internet for data and how to use these common tools to your advantage while you're at the office or mobile. Now, I am no expert in data mining. I've been learning as I've been going along, so I'm not going to be talking about hacks and some super serious tools and super secret squirrels with black hats and all that kind of stuff. But I think the information that I do provide you be very useful for the security practitioner to protect people, data, and property. So what exactly is open source intelligence? Well, it involves finding, selecting, and acquiring information from publicly available sources and analyzing it to produce actionable intelligence. So the internet has become this place that we get answers to problems. So gone are the days of thumbing through the yellow pages. When someone needs a plumber, find a bank, a gas station, to fix the car, whatever the issue, we look to the internet for our answers. With the proliferation of social media networks such as Facebook and Twitter, more and more people are posting and sharing information about themselves, their families, their pets, their jobs, vacations, whatever it is, they're sharing it publicly for all the world to see. So the old Monday morning water cooler bubbler gossip gossip gripes groans has transitioned to social media networks. If you are on social media, it is not private. You might think so, but you're still sharing information with your friends, and your friends can share your information with the world. The advantage of this information for the security practitioner is that the bad guys are using social media too. So from Al-Qaeda to the Occupy protesters, all are using some form of social media to organize and communicate. Open source intelligence is not always about looking for the terrorist. It can also be used to monitor and protect a brand, data, or physical property, or employees. You want to see what customers and employees are talking about, if they're complaining about things, Uh, threats against maybe the principal, the CEO, board members, for instance, and exposure of private data. Now, from a open source intelligence perspective, you can't monitor everything. So I suggest you pick the most popular social networks like Facebook and Twitter, uh, the most popular news websites and blogs and forums, etc., There's a plethora of tools out there on the internet, so obviously I can't go over every tool, so I will review a few that I personally use. And I'll start with Twitter. Twitter is like an open book. It supplies you with real-time data from anywhere in the world. You've heard me talk about Twitter before from for monitoring and managing your brand. You can also use it as an intelligence gathering tool. So you go to search.twitter.com, you enter in your search criteria, such as Occupy Wall Street, Riots, G8, World Bank, etc., whatever your keyword or particular phrase you want to enter in, and you can literally see who is talking about what. An extension of Twitter is a website called TrendsMap, trendsmap trendsmap.com, which, as the name implies, does exactly that. It maps out globally Twitter trends. You can scour the globe for what is trending. You can also enter in specific keywords and locations. The keywords will be displayed on the map and will show you a real-time Twitter feed of tweets that have those keywords. So those are just two quick, easy tools for intelligence gathering. Probably Probably the main one that I personally use is Twitter. But Twitter is just one social network. So I suggest you also do um, searches on Facebook and LinkedIn and YouTube and Flickr for images. Uh, So search those pretty regularly uh, based on your keywords and phrases. And speaking of searches, um, you should be using the big three, Google, Bing, and Yahoo, pretty regularly to search, um, put in your 
specific keywords and phrases in there as well. But the key is to figure out how to search for specific keywords. Uh, I do have a few examples in the show notes, so you can go to tbos.tv forward slash 009. And I have uh, a couple of examples on complex searches that you can do through Google. I would also recommend you use Google Advanced Search, sort of like uh, the Twitter search. Uh, you can go to google.com forward slash advanced underscore search. I'll have that on the show notes as well. And also I recommend Google Google Blog Search, where it only searches specific um, – the the – Search is only specific to blogs. On the app side, I really like Banjo, B-A-N.J-O. That's the website URL as well. Banjo is what is called a hyper-local social media app or a geolocation app. Banjo gives you real-time location-based search across the social graph. You can link it with your Facebook, Twitter, Foursquare, Instagram, and LinkedIn accounts. Aside from being a great social networking app, the really neat feature of the app is the community section. In this section, it contains a map in which it uh, displays anyone nearby or anywhere in the world, even if they're not on Banjo, which is a, uh, a huge plus in my book. You can see what people are tweeting about, where they are checking in with Foursquare, photos that they are sharing on Instagram. With Facebook, you will only see your friends if your friends have allowed the location feature to uh, to be switched on. This is a great mobile intelligence tool. Monitor as you move. For example, your principal is meeting with the board of directors in the downtown office. You can pull up the app and see who is chatting around the downtown office and along the route you're going to take and you can monitor the chatting while you are at the downtown office. You can search for specific keywords or phrases, known hashtags, or even people. The only drawback is that to see the people on the map, you and others using Banjo must agree to have the app keep tabs on your location. So I suggest you use a fictitious account. It probably goes without saying here, but I'll mention it anyway. When it comes to open intelligence digging, it is best to set up fake accounts so you can get into private groups and fly under the radar, so to speak. All right, next up I have Google Alerts, which I use a lot. Google.com forward slash alerts. So you get alert emails sent to you, sent to any email address. You don't need to have a Gmail account or a Google account. And these alerts are from the Google bots that scour the internet and send you sources that match specific search terms or keywords or phrases. So you uh, go to google.com forward slash alerts. You're answering your specific keywords or phrases. You set up how often you'd like to receive the alerts. I receive mine once a day. You enter the email where you want to send the alerts to, and boom, you're done. I have, uh, I think right now, about eight alerts that I receive uh, every morning. Uh, you know, social media, anything related to social media, or Twitter, Facebook. Um, I think I have one for security driving, bodyguard, executive protection, security vehicles, and my company name, SJC Web Design. Now the drawback on this is if you have this rather generic search terms like I do, you will get a lot of spam. So unlike me, you'll be much better off honing in on your own specific search terms to get better intelligence. Another great website that I recommend uh, for uh, data mining and also um, automation on the data mining is a website called If This Then That. It's ifttt.com, and you can be used in a similar fashion to Google Alerts. You can set up tasks, such as if Twitter search finds a specific phrase like um, executive protection, it will send you an email with those phrases in there, and it will actually show you the tweet 
who's tweeting about executive protection. So I'm still testing this out myself. There are some hiccups in that particular task, but there are several recipes, which is what um, if this then that dot com calls them. So you can uh, pick and choose several recipes and create your own tasks from these recipes that other people have created. Another way to get open source information is to subscribe to RSS feeds and various websites and add them to Google Reader. That way you only have to monitor Google Reader rather than having to visit the several websites every day. Yahoo Pipes is a free online service that lets you remix popular feed types and create data mashups using a visual editor. For instance, I use it to aggregate several RSS feeds from tech and social media websites into one RSS feed, which then I can put into Google Reader and then monitor it that way. The pipes that you create are private unless you send the URL to someone or you make it public because what you can do with these pipes is it's a good news aggregator. So you can actually, if you want to put like a news widget on your website, you can use Yahoo Pipes. Now, if you're checking constantly for new changes to specific websites, rather than Google Reader or Pipes, which gives you the entire blog post or an article, there are a few tools out there that can help you bring those changes to you. For that, I recommend a website called watchthatpage.com. It is uh, free to register. You set up your web pages you want to watch, and if there are any changes to the content of that page, it will send you an email with those changes. Another website I would recommend on this topic is, um, or in this tool, it would be infominder.com. I think one of the biggest uh, ways uh, to get intelligence from open source is through metadata. Now, metadata is basically data that describes data, and it is often overlooked by companies in their documents such as uh, Word and PDF. If you ever go to inside a Word document and you go to the properties, uh, that property section actually goes with the document. So if you put that up on the web and people download that document, they can go to the properties and they can see you know, when it was done, uh, what... Um, what file folder it came out of, the name or the owner of the document. So there's a lot of information you can get from uh, Word and PDF, those documents that people post up there. So be careful of what, to always check your properties uh, before you post anything online. But one of the big things to worry about when it comes to metadata is location information via your smartphone GPS locator. So if you have location services switched on for your photos on your smartphone, uh, it, and, and that metadata contains the date, the longitude and latitude of the precise point of where the photo was taken, and information about your camera, even down to um, shutter speed and whether or not the flash was used. Now if you post those images publicly on social media, the bad guys with a very simple tool can find out where you've been or where you are currently. There are a few great tools out there like Creepy, C-R-E-E dot P-Y, and MetaGooFill that will show you just how easily accessible metadata is. Another great website that I recommend for intelligence gathering is Whostalkin.com. It gives you the ability to search various websites for specific keywords and phrases just from this one website. So I can search for Ambush or Occupy Wall Street, and I can start with Facebook. I hit the Facebook link. It'll search Facebook for me. Then I hit Twitter. Then I hit CNN. Then I can hit all these other websites, and I get all the information right within this website. So check out whostalkin.com. One more website I want to mention when it comes to um, intelligence gathering, and that is socialmention.com. Social Mention is a real-time search, social media search and analysis platform that aggregates user-generated content from across 
the globe, into a single stream of information. It allows you to easily track and measure what people are saying about you, your company, or any topic across the web's social media landscape. Social Mention monitors 100, per, 100 plus social media properties directly, including you know the big ones, Twitter and Facebook, YouTube, Dig, Google, uh, FriendFeed, I think is another one. So, uh, for example, I did a search for Occupy Wall Street. Not only did I receive relevant content related to Occupy Wall Street, but also the top hashtags, which I then can plug into Trends Map, and the top users, which I can uh, actually download that list of top users who are talking about uh, Occupy Wall Street. I can download those users uh, CSV format, which is a very handy um, data format for plugging into a larger watch list database. And my last website is kind of like a, a bonus because it doesn't really give you intelligence gathering information, but it is a great website and it's called Global Terrorism Database, GTD. And I'll have this in the show notes, tbos.tv forward slash 009. And the Global Terrorism Database is an open source database uh, which includes information on terrorist events around the world from 1970 through 2010 uh, with annual updates planned for the future. And it's now 2012, so obviously they haven't gotten around to that. But unlike many other event databases, uh, GTD includes systematic data on domestic as well as international terrorist incidents that have occurred during this time period, and now includes more than 98,000 cases. So for an example, I did a search for Herrhausen, probably one of the more famous uh, terrorist attacks out there, and basically you get the who, where, when, what, and how. But it doesn't really give you the why or the lessons learned or how the attack happened. So it will tell you that it was the Red Army Faction. And then you can click on the Red Army Faction link. And actually it will bring up um, all of the um, uh, attacks perpetrated by the Red Army Faction. And it will actually show them in a timeline. The years and how many attacks per year that they've um, they've perpetrated. So it's not a daily use website type of thing, but it's more from a research perspective. I think it has very good information if you're um, if you're into the uh, studying about terrorist attacks. So that will wrap up this week. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions or comments about the podcast, please contact me at 781 781- 369-5185 or email me at lsnow at tbos.tv You can find me on Facebook at uh, facebook.com forward slash bizsec B-I-Z-S-E-C and you can find me on Twitter at bizsecurity that's B-I-Z-S-E-C U-R-I-T-Y And I will catch you in the next episode. Until then, my friends, stay safe.